Well, welcome to the From Busy to Rich podcast. And our podcast exists to inspire advisors to increase their profitability and their quality of life for themselves, but also for those that they serve. Um, Wes, how are you today? I'm fantastic, Andy. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. And a couple of great cups of coffee and um, commute to the office took three times as long today. And it usually takes about 20 minutes, it took me an hour. Wow. And uh, Waze took me on this route that was just gorgeous. I mean, I was like, I was like, I didn't even, I mean, it, it so took me out of the way because it had to, but I just had this attitude right when I turned it on and I'm like, oh, let's go, baby. Like, I got a different route to work today. It was just awesome. Awesome. I was like taking, soaking it in, windows were down. And so I embraced my detour and it was glorious. I wasn't on a straight road for more than three minutes. So I was some back road. So it was great. Uh, to get out of your routine sometime. Absolutely. Um, so I actually want to start the episode with talking about a few reviews that people have left. Uh, and so uh, I, I I haven't been any, you know, we have a lot of you know meetings about the podcast. I don't remember the meeting where we paid for all the five-star reviews, but we've only had five-star reviews. So um, yeah. I don't know if that paid or not, but um, in all seriousness, uh, folks, thanks for leaving reviews. Uh, the most powerful thing you can do because I will, Apple uh, knows your identity, obviously, if you if you leave a review. Uh, and I know that because they block some people's reviews. Uh, but that that's the best thing you can really do for the show. Probably beyond sharing it with someone else, you think would benefit. But I'm going to read two, Wes. You haven't seen these, and so I just want to get your feedback on them. Great. Uh, this is from D. Davis. By the way, one of my favorite things about podcast reviews is the username. Because you're like, this is, some, this is something they picked when they were oh, like, yeah. Skater right? Skater so, Boy. Seven. <laughs> yeah, Skater Boy. Yeah. So this is from D. Davis. 12001, uh, maybe his locker combination in eighth grade or something. Uh, he, he said, Hey, I'm learning a ton. I love this podcast. I love the concepts and language Wes and the team bring. They're awesome. And he says, I borrowed the pay your children language and booked a couple of appointments with it. Thank you. So Wes, um, we're going to talk about this in a future episode, but you know, I just want to remind everyone, like take this stuff and use it. So how often do you get feedback from advisors who just go, I use that and it worked and they're like surprised? No, it's, it's all the time. And it's my favorite thing about when people tell me, hey, really appreciate the content. Here's what it did when I used it, because that yeah. is the ultimate goal and objective we have here. It's not just the information, but the application. Absolutely. Absolutely. So well, well done, D. Davis, 12, D. Uh, And this is from Galicki. Uh <laughs> A uh, great lesson for financial advisors, said he or she. Uh, I really enjoy tuning into the conversations. They're always full of practical ideas on how to better serve clients and grow your business, all while having, I love this glicky, thank you, all while having a rich life in the process. Plus, I appreciate the witty banter present in each episode, uh, but don't let that go to your heads too much, fellas. Uh-huh. Overall, great podcast. It is on my must-listen list. So, glicky, thank you uh, for that. And I love the the balance of practical and yes, we 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 do try to be you know a hair witty from time to time. So um, you know these that you I know mean, we make a show that we would want to listen to. You know, like no BS. Let's be honest. You know, get right to it. Let's you know not have five hours of content. You know, uh, we'll let Joe Rogan do that. Uh, so Wes, tell me about how important it is for you when you teach, whether it's through the Transform series. When you're preaching at your church, you know, which they let you do a couple times a year, or even on this podcast, how how and why do you bring in you, like the personal stuff, not like deeply personal, you know what I mean? But like, why is it important for you to let people know the personal stuff? Because a lot of people just don't go there at all. It's all professional, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I think there's a there's a great C.S. Lewis quote. Um, it says, "Don't try and be original." Try and tell the truth and you'll become original in the process. And what I found, the impact that people have made on me, the most helpful are those that are really just telling a story that's been useful to them personally in their life. And they figured out not just to find the dots, but how to connect the dots in a way that's transferable and meaningful to other people. And I love that. And that's really, that's just what I'm trying to do is tell tell the truth the way I've learned it and and hopefully connect the dots in a way that I can give those dots to other people and they can follow them to lead them into increased profitability and quality of life. Love it. Love it. Well, and I just think it's really important that we include that. It's profitability and quality of life. Um, and it's not that 
if you do, you know, A, B, and C, it's going to equal D. Life is not that much of a formula. Right. But there are some principles that if you do it, even if something goes wrong, you're still going to have a good life because right. something really does go wrong. So, um, so I want to, um, uh, I want to point us or begin us with some conversations around someone that I know that we both have a tremendous amount of respect for, and that's Seth Godin. Um, and, and I agree with, um, you know, some early insights here. You said, if you want to do meaningful, thoughtful work, you should consider diving into the work of Seth Godin, G-O-D-I-N. It's Godin. And I, I want to read a quote by him and then we'll, we'll move forward with it. Uh, every time you take your turn, your turn, You are trying to make change happen, and it might not. When we think about the current reality and the future possibility of the new future, we begin to live inside the future that might not happen. In addition to the fear of failure, we begin to dance with living in two futures. I think this is a very unique human experience, and I would say it's unique for a lot of humans, meaning not uh, not a lot of humans actually consider two futures. They just let life happen to them. Yeah. So let's walk through this, Wes. What, simplify this idea. What, what, is, what is Seth talking about when he says living in two futures? And then get practical. Like, what does that mean for you? Yeah, no, I, I love this talk. When I heard it um, on, on one of his podcasts, I, I, wrote, I put it in my notes and said, we're going to talk about that one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, is that not true? Um, and and it's, it can take on so many forms, positive and negative. But I, I see this like this week. I was having a conversation with a client of ours that uh, they're they're selling their business that they've run for 15 years, yeah. and and he wants to like it's an exciting time for him. Um, and they close like in a couple weeks, and and as we're we're having these conversations, he, he I'm like. Yeah. And let's talk about it. He goes, I don't want to get too worked up about it. I don't want to get too excited yet. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, man, he said, because I've, I've been to the point of sale before. Oh, yeah. and then it didn't happen. Yeah. He said, so I, I just don't know yeah. that I can handle getting my hopes up. And that's what he said. I don't know that I can handle getting my hopes up. Hmm. And, and, and look, this, this guy's smart. We were kind of playing with it. I said, look, man, you're, you're emotionally mature enough to, to live in two futures. I said, one future is life isn't bad. Like what you have going on, mm-hmm. it works. It is, it is, it is going with, like you always want stuff to be better. I said, but man, try that other future on too. I said, because you know what? I mean, listen, let's say it doesn't happen. You're going back to this other good future and maybe you, you do it again with somebody else. I said, but also let's, let's, I mean, the very thing that I think separates us from, from, from most created organisms or, or things yeah. is, our capacity to envision a, a future that's not yet a part of our current reality. And that's where faith lives. Faith is the substance of things we hope for, the evidence of things we've not yet seen. Yep. And, and it is where some of the it, hope it, it lives, right? Hope for. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, to not have hope uh, in a better future than the current day is, is, is one thing. I think where it can take a bunch of negative edges. And I get this because I, I mean, I struggle with the same stuff if I'm not like keeping my mind in the right place is what, if, what if it didn't turn out the, the way that I said to myself, I thought I wanted it to go. And, and so I think there is this somewhere along the way, because everybody's had something that they failed at something that didn't go well, something, uh-huh. uh, something they thought was going to go one way and then, and then turn yep. a different direction. I think where we get really difficult is, is, um, we let that defeat because we, we, we categorize it as a defeat. We let that, that thing that didn't go the way we said to ourselves become a negative attribute instead of going, well, it didn't. Now what's the next future that I'm going to try and live in? Yeah. 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 It, it, it um, so I, I don't know if you want to share one of yours. This isn't part of our, our notes here. So I'll share one of mine, which is that I was engaged to be married to someone else. Uh, other than my current wife, and one month from the wedding day, we call the wedding off. And the older I get, the more ridiculous, like amazing that story gets. Because I'm just like, man, that is. If I knew someone and they were getting married on October sixth, it's September sixth now, I'd be like, and they're like, the wedding's off. I'd be like, dang, like talk about dodging, <laughs> right? Like, and um, 
you know, I didn't let that define, you know, for a few months, I was like, I am never going to look at a woman. I'm never going to talk to her. And it defined him for a while. But then, and and here's my challenge, uh, is I'm, and I'm wondering for you, Wes, like, is there a situation in your life where you, you, you didn't really want to think about the future in a positive light because of, because of something that happened. And then you were like, no, wait a minute. Like, I need to have hope about that. Yeah. Because if, 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 if you're not thinking about the future in a positive light, that's just saying, I have no hope. Yeah. Hope, it's, hope only involves the future, right? It's, a, it's defined by something that hasn't happened yet. And if you don't have hope, then you, you just don't think anything good's going to happen. And that's a lot of times because we hold on to something that has happened to us before. So have you ever had anything like that happen? Or how do you just break out of going, well, that happened. Uh, what's next? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think one of our, one of our takeaways we'll land on uh, later is going to be, how do you, how do you, in a healthy way, live in two futures. One is the current way I'm doing life may is going to produce a certain level of result versus a different way that I'm going to try and dance with life produces a future possible result, but it could be wrong or it could just not manifest that way. How do you do that in a healthy way? So I want to come back to that part of the question. Um, one thing that early or on in my career, I was probably five years into the business and I really, I had an idea and I, and, Here's ultimately where I'll go with it is I wasn't wrong. I was early is, is, is the way I'd describe it because that's a really cool. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I, I got in and I thought, you know what I want to do? I think the next step for us is we, and we, you know, I had, um, uh, I had a couple of, of team, team members that were on the administrative side. Yeah. Um, and I thought I would really like to have a team of, like next level advisors that we can, we can kind of do this together and, and really grow together. Meaning let's bring some people in that I think would be great at this role, get them up to speed. And uh, I hired a guy to help me do it. That was a really good friend of mine that uh, had some experience in that space and basically almost ran out of all my money is, is kind of the way that works. So it became really clear monetarily that this plane was not getting off the ground and if I was going to keep trying to fly this particular plane, I was going to crash into the trees and monetarily. So you tried to restructure your business, just kind of summarize yep. the yep. big picture. And you hired someone and the way the restructuring was going, that, that plane was not getting off the ground. That's right. That's right. And so, so you have options there. I mean, one is we, I just, it was some hard conversations and, um, and kind of scaling back to say, we, we, we got to go back to what we were doing before to yeah. kind of write the ship and fill some coffers. And, um, and cause the iterations we were trying just was not leading the outcome. Uh, and it just kept getting compoundedly compounded worse. So, um, but where you, where you can go with that is cause everybody's got that story and he sucks some version of that story. Something you tried did not work. Yeah. And you suffered, you felt like you were suffering because of it. It would have been better if you never tried it is, where by default the mind tends to go. Sure, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, it was all a mistake. It was all a mistake, all a waste. Yeah. Or, or you can, you can do what a really good friend of mine at the time said. You could, I mean, you could waste that. And I said, well, "What do you mean by waste that?" He goes, "You could waste that." He said, <laughs> "You you could take what you learned. Yeah, does not work right now. Yeah, when you tried it." Or you can store that, get yourself back to the place where you feel like you're ready to try it again. I said, I never want to try it again. He said, well, but maybe the five-year-older version of you will want to try it again. Because you don't know the perspective you'll have because you've not yet climbed to the top of the hill you're going towards right now. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it kind of got me in a better headspace. And we all need good, I want to talk about that too, good people around us. But um, where, where the tragedy would have been is is if I never allowed myself to live in another future than what my current circumstances were going to produce. Because right. it would have stopped me from seeking and seizing the things necessary. Because what, what it led to me doing at that point was saying, all right, well, if I was going to do it, well, how would I do it different the next time? And, and how would I do it? Now, fast forward, it, it was many years later. You know, Now we have a nine-person team. We have uh, three great lead advisors that are part of that team. And, 
and it's working. And, and so when I say I, 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 I wasn't wrong in the general idea, I was just early yeah. in my capacity to implement it. Yeah. But I couldn't have implemented it unless I had had the reps with the thing before. Yeah. And, and that's where it's, you know, I, you know, you're old enough and I'm old enough to remember. Like I, I remember, I literally remember the first time. This is going to be funny to a lot of people, I think. I remember the first time I took a file on a computer and I dragged it into a folder. And I was like, oh, that was cool. I'm like putting things in folders, you know? And I, and I say that because operating, that operating system at the time, which is, I don't know, Windows XP or Windows something, I don't know, was like mind blowing to me. Cause I remember when computers just had green letters on them and green numbers. And I was like playing that Wild West show or what was that Wild West? Uh, Trail? Oregon Trail. Yeah. Oregon yeah. Trail thing, thing, thing. I, and I remember that being cool. I like, know oh, it's computer time, computer lab. We had computer lab, whatever. Hey, and just point- aside, just as aside, for those of you who've never played Oregon Trail in computer lab, because I was, we had a computer. We were one of the first classes to have it. I, I would recommend you go ch- check out because basically you input all your family in and many of them get killed along the way. It's like, it's like so politically incorrect, the, the whole dance of it. And yeah. Now you got to make sure they're doing the right version of West. Like it's <laughs> got to have green. It's got, it's got to, it's got to look incredibly lame. That's yeah. really the key. That's how you like, need the right version. All your family just died because they were bitten by rattlesnakes and things no, like that. If you're no, going on the Oregon Trail. No, so I, I, I digress. Uh, no, but no, 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 no. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get back to my, uh, I'm literally struggling with what I was talking about. Oh, operating systems. So, um, but I remember at the time being like, that's awesome. And then they came out with another version of the operating system. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. You can do that. And then it became, and the point of that is that software companies and a lot of companies, you know, that are, that are successful, they think about things in versions, like version one was this. And yes, there's things they could do better. And what's fascinating, I think, is really good companies. And I think that Patrick Bet David talks about this in his next five moves book. But really good companies actually will start to hold back specific things and go, okay, this version, we're going to do this. And the next version, I feel like Apple does this a lot where it's like, oh, we're just going to give them a little bit and we'll give them a little bit more. I'm like, you know, the next seven versions and we're just riding along, right? But the thing that they have learned is you have to be okay with versions and that failure as a teacher, right? It's not, it's not a jailer, right? right. I mean, the difference between someone throwing you in jail and someone teaching you is couldn't be more different, right? Yeah. And so this idea of two different versions of the future and saying, I learned from that, I'm going to move on. I, I think that you've got a story about this that maybe you can speak to, um, you know, with like the version that maybe the early versions um, of a couple companies that, you know, embraced that or rejected it and how much it cost them because they didn't look yeah. at what they did as a version. They looked at it as a, as a, as a, um, uh, as a threat to who they are. Yeah. I, I love this because here's, here's what this is. This is, um, what we're talking about is the difference between, uh, and, and you guys have heard me reference this book before, but if you, again, not read it, go get it of 10 X is easier than two X. Cause, cause two X thinking is really not a different future than you, than your current reality. It's, it's, it's a little bit more than what you're doing now. It's yeah. incremental. Um, but you're really not, you just need to try and do what you do and do more of it, which is again, not fun. Everybody's got to work harder and get a little bit more result versus two futures is that there's that one. There's that one where I can get incremental, sure. you know, expansion. Or a 10X, which 10X is, is so much different and so transformed that it's like, I don't know if it's even going to work. Yeah. If it was, what would I have to learn and know in order for that to be accomplished? Yeah. And this is where we can get into a couple different, I mean, so there's a lot, a lot of times examples of this. We've talked about some before. Because it, you got to ask yourself, what, it, does it, the difference between feels risky versus is risky, right? So when I'm thinking about, Incremental for future and then my 10x future, my 2x future and my 10x future. Those, those are two different futures that I, I right. can, I need to know, I need to live in. But it felt risky for Kodak. If those of you don't know Kodak, go look it up. Kodak. Isn't, yeah. isn't it amazing, real quick though, that some people don't want to know who Kodak is? Yeah. Kodak is like saying, you know, for those of you who don't know who Google is, like, of course, you know, That's so right. there's a time when it's like everybody knew Kodak. Kodak was. I mean, yeah. virtually the only, it was the most dominant brand when it came to photography. That's right. <laughs> right. 
Uh, okay, but go ahead. What's your story? No, so they, they felt like it was risky for Kodak to get behind digital photography because it had built it. Didn't they own the copy or patent or whatever on digital yeah. photography? It was crazy. It was crazy. They built this business and made its entire profit up to that point and dominated the industry selling film and selling cameras that took film. And yeah. so it, it was, it, you know, in their minds, oh, this is risky to go do this when this is, this is, we could go incremental growth here. 10X was like, well, this, this future, this other future scares us. It's, it feels risky, but it, the riskier part was not doing it because yeah. it was risky not to build and sell components that embrace digital photography because they, in short order, did not exist yeah. or, you know, they, they became irrelevant in the space. Yeah. We did a whole podcast on this one, uh, so you can go back and listen to it. But it felt risky for Blockbuster Video to not spend fifty million to, to spend fifty million dollars to yeah. purchase Netflix because it, and rent movies without people having to go into their video stores. Yeah, uh, the reality was it was risky to continue yeah. to defend a model that required people to go into video stores. I, it's it's and it's I, we were actually talking about this pre-show a little bit about government stuff, but but one of the fundamental issues. When you create an organization, whether that's governmentally or even a nonprofit, it, it, or there's this interesting thing that happens sometimes with nonprofits that um, unless your mission is to kind of go out of business to solve a problem, then you have to just sort of keep the problem around to, yep. to, to substantiate your your reality as a, and, and say, this is why we, we need more funding or whatever. And so instead of fixing the problem, you have to just sort of maintain the problem, right? Because if you fix the problem, you've got a business. Yep. Uh, um, Unless you were part of the business of fixing the problem, like the new, the new, the, the, the new solution. So to say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna replace film with digital. Like Kodak was like, that's a threat, but they were so threatened by it that even though they were the solution, <laughs> you know, and the problem, like you you end up with you end up you guys would be okay. You just have to shift, and yeah. they're like, I want to shift. We're so yeah. married to our two X. Yeah. Was twice as much film. They couldn't do the 10X, which is screw the film. Let's go digital. Now, granted, we have a lot more hindsight than they do. Yeah. Right. But you think about with Blockbuster, you know, to say we want to stop people coming to your stores. Right. Yeah. Uh, which actually wasn't the first pitch. It, it was, it, you know, we want to come by mail, but, but we want less people come to your stores and, you know, we want, you know, we also want your 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 footprint to be everyone instead of the people within you know twenty five minutes of your store, but they were so married to their current status that they were threatened by the ten x. And I want everyone who's hearing our voice say, "Are you threatened by the ten x because it threatens your two x?" That's right. You can only see your two x. That's right. 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 That's a challenge. And it's so. Um... It, it's, it, it wasn't about like even immediately abandoning the 2X, yeah. vision, right? Because yeah. there's a long runway where they, they died yeah. slowly, if you will, you know? Um, when they could have, listen, they could have died slowly, but, but, but there, it's, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this, I'm going to turn this off slowly. We're going to, uh, you know, li listen, listen, this is great. This is very appropriate. You know what? Netflix is, I, I'm going to know something about Netflix. I think you don't know, which is exciting for me because okay. you know so much about this. Do you know what Netflix just, you might know. I want to be smarter than you, but I don't know. All right, here we go. Do you know what Netflix just closed, just ended? No. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. You're just, you're a smart guy. So I'm like excited. I'm I make something up, but I figured. No, 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 no. Google it. Google it. Put it on the Google. All right. They just ended their uh, uh, DVD by mail business. They just closed it. In 2023 is the last. And they did it. You know how they ended it? By sending everyone like seven random DVDs. Like, they're like, by the way, here's our inventory. Hey. They were still sending out mail DVDs. And my point is, and I don't think that Netflix was sad about that. Right. But like, we need to put our energy somewhere else. Like, we're not going to 2X that. You know what I mean? That's right. It's like, there's like, look, we get to, the, the 2X future versus the 10X future. If we don't have that, you will suffer unnecessarily at some point. You're going to be behind and you're going to be playing catch up. And, and again, we think about this and these are big companies, of course, but, um, it, this plays itself out in the life of every advisor. And, and here's where I'll, you know, I, again, I'm, I, I, I don't want to shame anyone's model and I'm not doing that, but I am going to ask you a question that I hope challenges you. Um, 
maybe when your feel feels risky versus is risky to you is if you've never charged for your advice mm-hmm. and you made your living solely off of placing product and managing money, it feels risky to charge for your advice. And that's normal because the 2X future of you doesn't charge for their advice. They just sell a little more product, manage a little more money. Not bad, wrong. What I'm, what I'm just asking is, I think it is risky in the long term to not create a business that's built around having advice worth charging for. Yeah. Independent of placement of product, independent of managing money, because I think you'll do more of all that. Yeah. I would just say this is, this is kind of where you see the putt going to, to be great at that. I want to push in another area. I- I don't know if this is always true, but I do think that there's, as we kind of land the plane here, but some, you know, talking about living in two different futures, um, you know, we're, we're going to be talking with a group uh, in Vegas um, in about a month. And, and one of the things we're talking about is um, sort of this 10x reality. And one of them is, you know, if you want to move up market, a lot of advisors, there's that phrase, if I want to move up market, is that you're not going to move up market if you're talking about 2x kind of stuff. Yeah. If you, if you really want to work with someone that's going to liquidate their business and it's got, you know, 50 million in cash or whatever it might be because they just sold their business, um, or, or whatever that reality is for you, whatever that, whatever 10 X would look like for you for that kind of client, uh, you need to be in different kinds of conversations that you need to be in different circles of people. So right. it's not a two X. It's not like I want my average client to go from 1 million to 2 million. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. it, it, you've got, you've got that's a different. There's a different strategies. Those are different kinds of conversations. Um, and there's a different level of patience, I think. There's a guy I follow on, um, like on YouTube and his whole company is, you know, like we sell jets.com or something like that. And he sells private jets. And this guy just knows everything in the world about private jets. He's, he's unbelievable. And, um, the, he dominates because he's not like twice as good as the next guy. He's 10 times as good as the next guy. Right. Um, and I think that it's healthy to today live in two futures, which is, Hey, what does my future look like? What does my 10 X future look like? Yeah. And I want to remind everyone of this and then I'll let you, um, you know, uh, you know, go where you want to go. But I want to remind all of you and, and Wes, I know you believe this future as well, but dreaming is free. Living in that next future doesn't actually cost you anything. You're just thinking about it. Yeah. The sad but exciting thing is some people just don't want to think about it. But if you want to think about it, that's the first step to having it. Yeah. So it's just some people just will not allow themselves to think about the 10x because it just scares them. Right. Yeah. Or, or their belief just won't let them get there. So today, I think Wes and I want to give you permission to say, <clears throat> you know, I make 150K a year as an advisor, I make 250. What does what does 10 X look like and how do you get there? And, and I, and I think you would agree with us that doing what you're doing twice as good is not going to get you there. Yeah. Wes, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what I want to give you takeaways. I want to give you three really quick takeaways. Uh, talk a little bit about them and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump out. Um, what do you, what do you do? Right. What, how, how do you, how do you tangibly do this? And I think three really good, useful things are, and then we talk about each one. Who are you training with? What are you hoping for? And what are you grateful for? I think this gives you a capacity to dance in two futures, both a 2X and a 10X, and give you the courage to lean into the 10X future, not sabotaging today, and, and be enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. So as I back into it, you know, one is, is who are you training with? You know, um, Seth Godin, we, we talked about this uh, a week ago, actually, um, with Tim Kennedy when he was on the show. If you guys didn't see that one, jump back and, and go look at it. But uh, who you train with matters. And like who, who you, what environments you're in matter uh, because, and Seth Godin says this is positive and negative, is uh, he has a saying he talks about all the time, people like us do things like this. People like us do things like this. And so if you're hanging around a bunch of people and the constant thing they're, they're living in is one future and it's a two X future, you're, you're not learning any of the skills necessary to move into the 10 X future. And you're not living in two of them for sure. But if you're surrounding yourself with people and that could be podcasts, it can be books, it can be um, communities that, that we talk about all the time. 
that are, 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 they are not only comfortable, they require people to live in not just a 2X, but a 10X future and then say, what are we doing about it to get there? I mean, you kind of, they always say, show me your friends, some of your future. That, that is real. Like that is, that is a real thing that I've seen. Get me out of my own way, get me unstuck. And then, and then allow me to put myself in the place of actually being able to see and seize the things that are going to get me to that 10x future. All right. So the first one, who are you training with? Right. Seth, Seth Godin has been writing a daily blog for uh, 15, 20 years now. Um, I actually bought a few of his books that have the daily blog in them. Um, and I think they cost like $80 to ship. I mean, they're just absolutely mainless. He lost money on that deal. I, he, he did a Kickstarter on it. Uh, but yeah, he's a great place to go. And hopefully this podcast and the Transform uh, series from Wes yeah. uh, that have helped people 10X their business. So the first is, who are you training with? And, matter. and, and for Tim Kennedy, that meant Justin. Justin was his That's team. right. That's right. Right. right? Uh, the second is, what are you hoping for? You have to have a vision. Uh, you know, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. That's right. But evidence of things and uh, hope for, for, but you have evidence of things that are yet unseen. It's like, you're just like, I, I, I want that. I'm going to believe it's going to happen. Has happened now, but I'm just going to believe it's going to happen. Right. Um, and you have to decide, do I have a future that's by default or by design? Because there are people, and, and this is a really bad book title. All right, everybody. Okay. But like 1.03, 10X is easier than 1.03X. And 1.03 is your 3% raise. And I'm just telling you, there are people that every year they get a 3% raise. And I know you're an advisor, you're, 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 you're leading advisors. You don't live in that world, but like you do live in a world where you're like, oh, great. I made another 10%. Like, okay. You live in a 1.1%, 1.1X yeah. world. We're talking 10X. How do you get to 10X? And I think it's, that's by design. I, I yeah. don't know anyone. Uh, here's what I like to say, Wes. People who win the lottery, okay, you can, you know, I would never buy a lottery ticket. At least they had enough faith to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> right? Okay. So at least they had some vision of like, I, I want to be a millionaire. I want to buy a ticket. Right? So so, so there has to be some action taken. And the last one is, and I want you to land the plane with this one. Why is what are you grateful for important when it comes to living in two different futures? Yeah, because by default, because we do have this capacity to have a future that's not yet here. And if it's a big future or if it's a little future, there is still a gap between where we are and where we want to be. And it gets real easy for people, especially that are, that are entrepreneurial minded, creation minded, goal minded to delay enjoyment until they hit that milestone. The problem is when you hit that milestone, there's a new milestone. And, and so if you don't learn the art of being able to enjoy the journey, if you don't learn the art of being able to dance into two futures, um, your whole life's going to be a bad time. I mean, maybe with moments of celebration as you hit there, certain things, even if you achieve things. But the great thing is we all have this other thing in us that has the capacity to say, hey, what am I? Like, that is where I want to go. And I want to dream big. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm, I'll go through the like excitement of the, of the future vision. But take the time to have a grateful condition, right? Say, wait, what, what is it that I'm super excited about? That's happened in my life. Maybe a list of, I saw a great quote the other day. I have in my life right now, many things I once prayed for. And wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, how true is that? That they were such a big deal at the time. Boy, if they happened. Well, a lot of those have happened. So count, count the blessings, if you will, that you have and the things you are grateful for. Cause what it does is two things for me. It, it settles me down in a way that makes me go, man, I, and there's a lot of great things we have going on right now. It yeah. increases my own quality of life in the process. But you know what it also does is it helps me embrace the journey in a way that I'm not waiting to experience some future destination in order to enjoy the trip there. Yeah. And I want people to enjoy the trip there because you're going to spend all your life in the trip. Yeah. Another thing I want to encourage people with what you just said, Wes, um, and then you want to do that closing quote? Yep. Okay. All right. So, so I want to encourage people with this. I think there's some people that may have had an issue with what you just said, not because, uh, well, this, they said, hey, uh, you know, you just said, Hey, you have some things right now that you had been praying for in the past. You, you're, you have some things, you have a reality of your life that well, a long time ago was a hope and a dream and a wish and a prayer. Okay. There's some people who heard that and said, you know what? I don't 
Like I, I don't have the things I, I've wanted and wished for. And I just want to speak to you if you're in a place where you're like, I want to see that, but I'm just doing, I'm having such a hard time right now. Yeah, I've got food on the table and the mortgage is getting paid and, and maybe other people see me as being successful, but, but I'm still struggling with things. Um, is that if you have another day, which you do today, and you probably will tomorrow, then there's still time, right? There, you still have a future, right? And I'm 45. Like I, I used to cut my hair and not have gray hairs, and now they cut it, and they're still there. You know, I mean, they're just they're 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 permanently moving in, right? And, and yet, I don't get discouraged by my age. I just I still got time, you know. And so, I want to encourage you. If any part of this you sort of went like, "Man, that'd be great," but you still have time, right? You still have time. Um, and so, Wes, let's end with that quote. Yeah. So great, great again. C.S. Lewis quote says this. I have this on the bottom bottom of my email right now. If we let ourselves, we shall always be waiting for some distraction or other to end before we can really get down to our work. The only people who achieve much are those who want knowledge so badly that they seek it while the conditions are still yet unfavorable. Favorable conditions never come. I love that. I think it speaks so well to living into futures because that that other common 1-2x future Versus your 10x future, the common one is so so much easier for you to feel like you can do because it's just doing what you've always done. But if you can seek knowledge, want it so badly, even though you feel like it's not convenient, there's not enough time for it, that you can achieve that 10x future. One is you got to have the 10x future and hold both simultaneously, but it will cause you to see and seize things that you just couldn't have picked up on before. And then you just got to do it. Well, thank you, Wes. And thanks, folks, for listening to today's episode. I do, I do encourage you, actually, if you have not seen the episode we did with Tim Kennedy, go find us on YouTube uh, and watch that episode. Wes was actually there with Tim for that uh, interview, and it was really, really fun just kind of see them interact and hanging out together. I know they had a great time. Um, so if you haven't checked that out one, please do. And also thanks to those who left a review. And if you have not left a review, um, please go leave one. Just takes a, a minute or two. Uh, but if you leave a review in the podcast app of uh, Apple, that would be great. Or leave us a few stars inside of Spotify. Thanks for listening.